on today's show. He's back. The Memphis Grizzlies were the turkey and Jalen Green absolutely cooked them. Also serving up a nice little side of stuffing with that insane poster on Defensive Player of the Year, Jaron Jackson Jr. We're going to break down all the action coming up right here on a Thanksgiving edition of Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control, Houston. Ignition sequence start. Throw it up to Jalen Green. Shingun here in the short row. Oh, my, that's the no look. Jabari for three and the win. Yeah! Look at Tari Eason. Cookies. Here comes Tari. No! T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. The Houston Rockets select Amen Thompson and Cam Whitmore. One thing I have never done is not made the playoffs, and so we want to take that step here as well. Six. Five, four, three, two, one. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian and credentialed media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Mondays. Be sure to follow along on Twitter at JT Gatlin and the show, of course, at Locked on Rockets, free and available wherever you listen to your podcast, including YouTube. Just search Locked on Rockets. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. We got some fun. We got a fun Thanksgiving topic to tackle on today's show. I want to know your starting five lineup for your Thanksgiving plate. I'll get to my Thanksgiving plate a little bit later on, but as always, thank you so much for making the show part of your day every single day, whether it's on your way to work, on your lunch break, in the gym, at your Thanksgiving table. Uh, appreciate you for making the show part of your day every single day. Thank you for being an everydayer. Houston Rockets get a Turkey Day dub one well not quite Turkey Day because we don't get we don't get Turkey Day and Turkey Day action in the NBA. 111 91 win against the Memphis Grizzlies. And what a game for Jalen Green to what a way for Jalen Green to respond after being benched in the fourth quarter against the Golden State Warriors. This game was one hell of a response from Jalen. Gotta lead with him. He is your Locked on Rockets player of the game in this one because he ignited this team. We're going to get into a little bit of the game flow and whatnot, but this game was 72. Oh, hang on. After the, after the technical, I apologize. 72-67 near the end of the third quarter before Jalen Green hit that insane poster just absolutely dunking all over Jaron Jackson Jr. And that ignited the Rockets to go on this massive run to close this game out 111 to 91. And I, I want to rewind for a second though. And Jalen's night wasn't all, you know, it wasn't all on fire. It wasn't all incredible. He actually really struggled in this game. He finished the game with 34 points on 13 of 26 shooting it was 3 of 13 from downtown. That's part of the struggles right there. 5 of 5 from the charity stripe. He had two boards, four assists, a steal, and only one turnover. And it, it didn't, it ended incredibly. And it's fine that he, he like, he talked about that dunk, right? His teammates talked about it. It kind of woke them up. It was, Jabari said it was a momentum shifting play. And you look at Jalen's game through those first three quarters. I mean, he was struggling. Those first three quarters, he was 8 of 18 shooting. He kind of started to come alive there a little bit in the third quarter. Really, he was struggling in the first half. And even after the game, we talked about it, and, and Fred mentioned, uh, that. well, Ime mentioned that Fred had a little kind of, you know, pulled Jaden to the side and had like a little pep talk for him, basically somewhere, in, I think it was like in the second quarter. And when we tried to ask Fred about it, <laughs> Fred kind of laughed it off, and he was like, well, I can't. As you know, Fred has said before, he likes to cuss a lot when he's on the court. So I'm sure he, he said it was a, Fred did say it was a one-sided conversation. So Fred kind of chewing out Jalen Green a little bit, talking about his energy. And even Jalen highlighted it and said, yeah, I didn't have the right energy in the beginning of the game. And as the game went on, things got a lot better. And part of that was this approach. It, it felt, the process felt a lot better for Jalen in this game offensively. The shots that he was taking, the looks that he was getting, the looks that he was generating for his teammates. 
And a big part of that comes from Ime Udoka, who told us post game that on the flight back from San Francisco, he had a little like a one on one film session with Jalen Green, where he sat there with him on the plane and he walked him through the different areas where he was missing some opportunities, right? Where he was, you know, n- not capitalizing on certain reads, the ways that the the Warriors or the Lakers were guarding him and looking over film about how the Grizzlies were probably going to guard him so that he would be better prepared for this matchup. And he highlighted the fact that even though Jalen, you know, missed a lot of his threes, again, just three of 13 shooting, that those are the shots that they will live with, you know, Miss them or make them, they are happy with the looks that Jalen was getting in this game. And Ime went on to say that they're confident in Jalen's ability to shoot himself out of a slump so that if he does start a game kind of cold, that as long as he's taking the right shots, then he'll get himself going. And that's exactly what we saw, right? He struggled in the first half, and then he really got himself going in that third quarter and then and then you know ended the quarter with an exclamation point with the insane poster over Jaron Jackson Jr., which when asked about it, Jabari was laughing, man. He was like, you, he was like, you saw my reaction. I fell out of my, he was like, I fell. Because <laughs> Jabari was in the background. He like legit just fell onto the floor. The entire Rockets bench stood up. Uh, they got a technical. Alper and Shingun walked away with the technical. Uh, it, was, it was an insane reaction from the Rockets, but it really did kind of catapult this team. It woke them up, right? Shot in the arm. We talk about this all the time, but there's there are momentum shifting plays, momentum changing moments over the course of a game, and it felt like that dunk kind of woke the Rockets up. They they'd been kind of slogging through this game. They couldn't really get anything going offensively. Jabari was their best offensive option up to that point. A little bit more on his game uh, coming up here in segment two, but you know that that dunk kind of just reinvigorated, ignited the whole team, and then they really took off in a big way there in the fourth quarter. So I love Jalen's response. I love that he came out with this aggressive mentality. I love that Ime is is working so closely with him because you've got to imagine that Ime sees all this talent that Jalen Green has and wants to help him unlock and be the best version of himself. The question is, can we get this version of Jalen consistently? We know the highs are insanely high. Once Jalen had it rolling in this game, he looked unguardable. Like, he looked like the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies had zero answer for anything Jalen was doing. I mean, he was walking into shots with confidence. He was dicing up the defense. He was dri- cutting through a pick and roll, and then Jaron Jackson Jr. drops all the way back to the basket. So he's like, okay, well, I'll just pull up for, you know, from the mid-range. It was so easy for Jalen. And the thing is, is it can always be that easy. He just has to play with the right mentality, the right mindset, and that's what Fred is there for. You know, Fred with his little pep talk, his little one-sided conversation, Ime with the, the film breakdown, the one-on-one film session on the flight back. Jalen has all these support systems now to be the best version of himself. And I'm, man, I, I if we can get this version of Jalen consistently, it doesn't even have to be this version of Jalen, just a slightly better version than the one that we got on the West Coast road trip. Uh, this Rockets team is going to go a very, very long way this season. Let me know your favorite moment from... Jalen Green's 34-point outing, a new season high for Jalen Green. This year didn't quite break his career high. We'll see if he has a you know a, a 40 bomb somewhere in him later this season to break his career high. But coming up, want to get into Jabari Smith Jr.'s game as well as some additional thoughts from this one. I, I've got a couple more points I want to make about Jalen and his performance in this game, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And we got to talk about the the struggles from Alperin Shingun and Dylan Brooks as well. It wasn't all sunshine and roses in this Turkey Day win against the Memphis Grizzlies. We're going to get there in just one moment. And continuing on here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Now, I do wanted to I wanted to add one more point about Jalen Green and, and you know kind of the you know the the message that Fred gave him about the energy, right? I think so much of it is Jalen has to be able to do even when the, when his shots not falling, he needs to still be doing the little things, right? You know, he needs to be rebounding, he needs to be defending, he needs to be looking for opportunities to get his teammates involved. And I very much felt like this game was a night and day difference 
in how Jalen was approaching the rest of the game, the little things, the attention to detail things versus the Warriors game. Because the Warriors game, he started out rough defensively. He was late on some rotations. He caused some easy, you know, easy shots for Steph, for Clay. And this game, it didn't feel like that whatsoever. It felt like he was locked in from the moment the game started. And that, I think, helped him and helped the team kind of get through those first two, two-ish quarters, two and a half quarters, where offensively, I mean, offensively, the Rockets were just, they were struggling. They couldn't hit anything. They shot 43.5% from the floor. They only shot 32.5% from three. And that was before they, like, turned it on there in the fourth quarter. Again, as a team going into that fourth and final frame, the Rockets were shooting 37.7%. Uh, from the field and only 30, just a hair over 30% from long distance. They closed out that fourth quarter in a huge way, again, courtesy of uh, Jalen Green's spectacular dunk to end the third quarter, which I will say um, he did travel a little bit on that dunk. But the rule of the NBA is if it looks cool, they'll they'll allow it. So Jalen Green took about four step, steps leading up to that dunk. Um, if he if he could get that much runway on all his posters, then I think we'd have quite a few more Jalen Green posters to appreciate, which uh, when Jabari was asked about whether that is the best Jalen Green poster he's seen in person, Jabari was like, oh, no, I've seen, he was like, I've seen a lot better from him. Um, so even Jabari appreciated the dunk and enjoyed it, but even Jabari was like, no, nah, I've, I've seen better from him. So uh, as far as the, over the course of this game, it really kind of felt like, the Rockets did a really good job of forcing, of, of kind of limiting the Grizzlies offense. Now the Grizzlies did walk away with a ton of free throws. So yet another game, you know, stop me if you've heard this one before where the opposing team gets a mountain of free throw attempts compared to the, to the Rockets free throw attempts. So the Grizzlies had 35 free throw attempts. They hit 30 of them, 30 of 35 from the free throw line. Uh, Rockets with 20 free throw attempts went 17 of 20. So both teams right in that 85% range from the free throw line. I do think, though, that the Rockets, aside from the fouling, which was, again, incredibly frustrating. Like, you, you have the the home cooking out, in, out on the West Coast, and you come home, and then you still can't get even a... a an unbiased whistle. It still felt like the Rockets were getting, you know, a, a shafted a little bit by the officials in this one. Uh, Desmond Bain, 10 trips to the free throw line was nine of 10. Jaron Jackson Jr. 12 trips to the free throw line was nine of 12 there. Aside from the free throw shooting, I really felt like the Rockets did a good job defending in this game. Jaron Jackson Jr. Just seven of 21 from the floor. The Rockets did an incredible job on him. Desmond Bain, only six of 12. Zaire Williams off the bench, only four of 10. Uh, overall, it really felt like the Rockets defense did a strong, did a, a solid enough job. And they really, the, the Grizzlies tried to run some of their offense through Jaron Jackson Jr. And he's just not that guy. Like, like watching Jaron Jackson Jr. Try to, you know, be the focal point offensively for this Grizzlies team, which is dealing with a ton of injuries for sure. Like they're missing so many of their key contributors, but it's, it's basically Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson Jr. Offensively. Like that's what they've got. And that's what it looked like in this game. I, I want to give a lot of credit to Jabari Smith Jr., who drew the task of, of guarding Jaron Jackson Jr. throughout points of this game, uh, was his primary defender, and did a phenomenal job. I mean, he opened the game. He had a block really early on on Jaron Jackson Jr., and I believe if memory serves, I think he, he had the block on Jaron Jackson Jr. I think he hit a triple on the next possession, like, you know, going the other way. It, yeah, I'm, I, th I think that's what happened. Uh, either way, he had an early block on Jaron Jackson Jr. for sure in this game. And Jabari continues to build on what has been a really impressive stretch of games. He had 18 points on 6 of 10 shooting, was 3 of 4 from behind the 3-point line, had 9 rebounds, 2 assists, and a block, 0 turnovers in just 27 minutes of run. And through about two and a half quarters, Jabari was the Rockets' best player. And... I liked what we saw out of him. He continues to be aggressive. The Rockets even gave him some sets, gave him some plays where he got the ball, you know, on a post up where he was trying to uh, attack and, you know, get to get to his little sweet spot there. There were a couple moments though where you know, Jabari would start kind of his 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 post up opportunity or whatever and kind of fumble the ball a little bit or you know, Grizzlies would flash like a second defender towards him and it would kind of take him out of his rhythm. You know, he settling at one point he picked up his dribble and had to settle. He he spun baseline for like a turnaround jumper that he missed. 
while I do like that the Rockets tried to get Jabari, uh, you know, a, a couple extra looks here and there, I feel like you got to put the right pieces around him or you got to put the right spacing around him. And it's a little bit harder for Jabari to operate out of the post when Shingun is in the game because even though Shingun's been relatively consistent from three, defenses still are willing to send a second man over from Shingun and force Shingun to hit that shot. So it felt like the spacing wasn't necessarily optimal for Jabari at times to be able to capitalize on the game that he was having. And that's where, again, I'd, I'd really like to see Jabari get a chance with the second unit, similar to Jalen Green, where he can go, you know, sub him out a little bit earlier, put him back in with that second unit and let him go to work, especially in a game like this where he clearly had it going. He was the Rockets' best offensive option through about two and a half quarters. And it's a good thing Jalen woke up there, you know, in the third quarter and, and, and got, you know, got the whole team rolling there in the fourth. But, you know, this, this is one of those moments where you'd like to see the Rockets identify and lean a little bit further into Jabari when he does have it going, which he did in this game. And I do think for him between the post up and being able to get to a post up and like turn around fade away versus like a face up opportunity from kind of the, you know, free throw, free throw line extended area or at the elbow. I like those elbow touches for him a little bit better because he's actually shown a, a lot of improvement being able to put the ball on the floor and drive to the rim. And so if you get him in triple threat right around the free throw line, right around the elbow and, you know, put spacing around him, then, you know, if they flash a second defender, he's got the height and he's got good enough court vision to be able to make that pass to the open man or just put the ball on the deck and, and drive past his defender or elevate over the top. Like there's a lot of options there for Jabari. So while I'm still, ex you know, ecstatic that the Rockets got this win in emphatic fashion after what felt like a really ugly game through three quarters, it's one of those where, you know, I, I'm nitpicking here, but I still would have liked to see them, you know, feature Jabari a little bit more when he was clearly the best player on the floor for the Rockets, best defensive presence on the floor throughout the game, you know, guard, guarding and holding Jaron Jackson Jr. Uh, to some, you know, some really difficult attempts. But then also offensively, he was the one Rocket that was actually, you know, cooking until that fourth quarter because unfortunately in this one Alper and Shingoon and Dylan Brooks struggling in a big way for for very different reasons I think and we're gonna get to that in just one moment And final segment here at Locked on Rockets your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball now a couple of the you know not so great storylines from this game Dylan Brooks and Alperin Shingun who which I want to preface before highlighting this segment here their struggles in this game if any two players were allowed to have let's say an off night right again you know for this team it's definitely Alperin Shingun and Dylan Brooks because they to this point this season have been the two most consistent players for the Rockets so it was bound to happen that one that they were both going to have an off game at some point. It just so happened to coincide with one another. And I think it happened for two very different reasons. So let's start with Alper and Shingun. First off, I, I don't think he's playing at 100%. And, you know, he in this game, he missed a lot of, like, easy, kind of like, he missed some bunnies, right? Things that are, buckets that are usually, like, super easy, his bread and butter type shots, right? His little push shot. Uh, you know, smoked a layup at the rim, I believe. Like, just, just some easy misses for Alper and Shingu, or some easy buckets that he should have had in this game, and they just weren't dropping. And I think part of it could be, right, that that little bit of back tightness that he's dealing with, and, you know, against the, against the Warriors, it felt like it kind of loosened up maybe as the game went along, and I don't know if it was just different in this game. You know, I don't know if it was a matchup thing where just, you know, Biombo and, and Jaron Jackson Jr. were making it a little bit difficult for him, but he kind of struggled in this game. Just 11 points on four of nine shooting, uh, seven boards. He did have three assists, and he had three blocks. So I did, I did like Alper and Shingun's defensive intensity in this game. He wasn't, he wasn't letting his offensive struggles dictate how much of an effort he was giving defensively. And that's kind of one of those issues with young teams at times is sometimes you'll see young players, they kind of hang their heads defensively when their offense isn't going. We, we've definitely been there and seen that with, with Jalen, with Jabari. They've all done it. And and even Alp in the past has done it, where, where he's, you know, the team gets frustrated. They're not, you know, 
things don't look good offensively. So then they're not putting in the requisite effort on the defensive end. But this team has that defense first identity. And so they, Alpi very much, you know, was still a solid presence on that side of the floor over the course of this game. So he gets a night off. It's totally fine. The Rockets were able to step up and, and Jalen was able to step up almost seemingly kind of by necessity, right? Like without LP putting up the monster numbers that he's been putting up, Jalen kind of had to deliver. And so in a way, in a weird way, I'm kind of glad that it worked out this way because we got a, a Jalen Green masterclass performance because LP just didn't have it in this game. And sometimes that's going to be the case, right? There's going to be games where Jalen doesn't have it and LP is carrying things, or there's going to be games where neither of them have it and Jabari is carrying things or Fred or Dylan. And that's what this team does is they, they the equal opportunity offense works because it, it allows each one of the starters, it allows really everybody a chance on this team to shine. And in this game, Jabari was the one who got to shine through about two and a half quarters. And then Jalen woke up in the third and was able to close things out. So it worked out beautifully. Uh, and then Dylan Brooks, uh, look, this was, a this was Dylan Brooks going against his former team, you know, uh, sp kind of some, some spurned lover vibes a little bit where, you know, it's you know, the ugly breakup, whatever you want to call it. And Dylan happened, you know, went out and I, I guess he said it to Jonathan Fagan when they were in, uh, on the West coast road trip, I'm guessing at practice or a shoot around or something. Uh, he said that the Grizzlies have no swagger. So the swaggerless Grizzlies, <laughs> and you could tell, look, Dylan was pressing a little bit in this game. Like he wanted, he wanted to have a good game and he was taking some, uh, we'll say some, some Dylan, Bro some Memphis Dylan Brooks type shots, right? Some Grizzlies Dylan Brooks type shots where he was maybe forcing the issue a little bit too much early on, taking some ill-advised shots, some rush three pointers. He took a step back three at one point. Like <laughs> he was, he was trying to cook and it didn't work. Um, he finished with 13 points on four of 14 shooting. Oh, of five from long distance. He was five of five at the free throw line. We'll give him that. And he played good defense, five rebounds. He had an assist. He had a steal. So it wasn't necessarily like a, you know, an awful game for Dylan, but it was, it was, this was the, the version of Dylan Brooks. That you're like, okay, if, if you're getting this version of Dylan Brooks offensively every night, then you're going to have some issues. Uh, he definitely didn't like kind of stay in his lane or just take what the defense was giving him, which is what we've largely seen from Dylan Brooks through this early part of the Rockets season is he's been a very complimentary piece offensively for this team. I do also want to say that I think at certain points in this one, especially with the offensive woes and the way that it felt like really nobody but Jabari had it going for about two and a half, three quarters, uh, offensively at least. There were some moments where Dylan like was trying to get himself going. I think very much early on it was about like, hey, it's the Grizzlies. You know, I want to I want to score on the Grizzlies. Right? I want to score on my former team. I want to show them up, that kind of thing. And then as the game went on, it was less about that and like he, he kind of settled into things. But then it was more just like, okay, well, somebody needs to score, and I guess it's going to be me. And, and it just didn't work. It just wasn't Dylan's night, unfortunately. Um, sometimes you have them. Sometimes you don't. Bad shooting night for him. Bad shooting night for, re realistically, the entire team, actually. Fred was 4 of 8 from 3, and Jabari was 3 of 4 from 3. And Tari was 2 of 3, but then everybody else, I mean, just misses all up and down the lineup. Jay Sean Tate, 0 of 3. Jalen, 3 of 13. Again, I, I like Ime's approach. I like that Ime is giving Jalen the confidence to take those shots. But against a different team, like going three of 13 from long distance, you know, Jalen may have shot the team out of it there in that first half, but hopefully this will serve as like a tune up game where he can be, uh, you, know, you know, a little bit more on the money with his three ball uh, going into Friday night's matchup against the Denver Nuggets. Uh, other thoughts from this one just, you know, the Rockets still. They, they, they found a way to win with defense. They were able to hold on through those three quarters until Jalen was able to wake up offensively. And, and really the whole team woke up offensively in that fourth quarter, hung 37 points on the Grizzlies. But for this team to be the best version of themselves, they've got it. They, they, they can't have these ridiculous scoring droughts. You know, they've got to find a way they've got to find some more consistent sets to run um, some easy opportunities offensively. And a big part of that was, Hey, their, their, their most consistent offensive force LP was struggling in this game. And sometimes that's going to happen. Sometimes you just got to dig out an ugly win. And it wasn't even an ugly win. It was a blowout win. Like it was, it, but it felt like it was headed for an ugly ending an ugly game uh, for those first three quarters. So, uh, you know, the Rockets did a good job. They closed this one out strong 
And this has been, you know, they, they've closed out some games, but this is this was a nice little change of pace where rather than like a, a slog it out, you know, fist fight all the way to the end where they like eke out a win, they turned it on in that fourth quarter and were able to escape with a big W instead of just like, you know, by the skin of their teeth kind of thing. So I like that from them. And this kind of, uh, this ability to beat, you know, the teams that they're supposed to beat, which the Grizzlies, as decimated by injuries as they are, this was a team you should have beaten, right? The Rockets were were favored in this game, and they won, and they should have won. So they, they took care of business. The good teams in the NBA take care of business against the bad teams, and then if you go, you know, 500, you know, 50-50 against the good teams, then that puts you on pace for like a, you know, 60% win rate. So as long as you're out there taking care of business against the bad teams and you're putting up a good faith effort and a good fight against the good teams and you split about half those games, you know, down the middle, then this Rockets team is going to be a lock for the playoffs. And so far, it pretty it kind of feels like they've done that, right? They drop, you know, they they drop those first few early ones, right? The 0 and 3 start, the West Coast road trip was a little rough, but they're back on top of it now. They're seven and six. They've got another home game against the Nuggets before they hit the road for another three-game road trip. So this Rockets team is, I think, a little bit ahead of schedule compared to where I would have thought they would have been at this point in the season. I would have thought there was going to be more growing pains so far along, and they look like a good team, right? They've still got some things that they got iron out. Jalen needs to be more consistent, but hopefully this game is an eye-opening experience for him. And again, he's going to continue to work with Ime Odoka and, bet- you know, between Ime helping Jalen and Fred helping Jalen and, you know, having guys to play off of like Alperin, Shingun and, and, you know, having his support network around him, I feel like Jalen can be the guy. Like, I feel like he can, he's going to get this thing figured out. You know, I wasn't worried. Like, part of where my frustration came from in our last episode highlighting Jalen's struggles was because I feel like he can be so good. And, like, I want him to be so good. I want him to be so good, so bad. Like, you don't even know. Because, he look, he's the crown. I don't want to say he's the crown jewel of the Rockets rebuild, but he's the, he's the first pick of the rebuild. You know, he was the first young piece that, you, you know, we, like, latched onto and, and and have held on to, right? So I want him to be so good, so bad for so many reasons. And th- this game was kind of that that glimpse of like, man, this, this is what Jalen could be. He's so close to putting it all together. He's just got to make it a little bit more consistent. So excited to be able to talk about a Turkey Day dub for your Houston Rockets. Um, again, just clobbering the Grizzlies there in that in that fourth quarter. Uh to wrap things up here, gonna get a little. We'll we'll get a little. You know, some Thanksgiving festivities here. I want to know. So obviously, give me your thoughts on the game. Let me know how you felt about Jalen's performance. You know, the shots that he was taking, the approach from Ime and you know Fred's little pep talk. Give me your thoughts on all that. But for our Thanksgiving edition LOR, I do want to know how would you build your your starting five Thanksgiving plate? So you get to pick five. Thanksgiving food items can be sides, can be main mains, whatever you want, but you get to pick five items to make up your Thanksgiving plate. You're starting five. What would be in your starting five on your Thanksgiving plate? Mine, I'm going with turkey, sweet potatoes, dressing, mac and cheese, and green bean casserole. That's my that's my five. Also, I'm going to clarify: turkey does not count as a thing. Turkey is just extra. That's a, that's a topping. So, the, like you're you're not you're not getting like some some dry turkey or something if you don't claim gravy as one of your starting five. So, give me your starting five Thanksgiving plate. Give me your thoughts from this Rockets win against the Memphis Grizzlies. But for today's episode, that is going to do it. As always, thank you so much for checking out the show. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Just search Locked On Rockets. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. But as always. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with you and yours. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball.